Hey guys, my name is Kimberly Ibbotson. I go by Kimberly Tay Hair on Instagram, and today I'm gonna to be showcasing some everyday vivid looks for your clients who maybe wanna live a little natural, but have a little fun and enter into the world of vivids. Um, I have a couple visual examples of what are some techniques that you can do to create um, a vivid and a natural look together. Uh, one example is here. It is a platinum base, which you can have with any natural color, red, brown, black, and it basically is a melt into vivids. This is one way to wear vivids. It's a little bit more forward, so you definitely see it a bit more. Another way is a color blocking technique, which can be used in naturals, it can be used in vivids, and it can be used to combine the two. And that's what this technique is. It's a color block, so you have a little bit more, again, um, visual representation of the vivids. These are two ways to incorporate vivids into your client's everyday natural look. If maybe they're not fully ready to take the plunge for you know either maintenance reasons or maybe just for comfortability reasons. Today we're gonna to be showcasing a third technique, which is one of my favorites, which is a veil or a halo placement. And that technique is going to be primarily the entire top of her hair is going to cover the bottom layer of her hair and create a veil um, of hydrogloss blondes with vivids underneath. So this is a little bit more low maintenance, a little bit more hidden. You can do it with your natural color so you have minimal maintenance, if not any at all. Um, for her, obviously, she likes living in the blonde realm. We had a prep day yesterday and had a consultation about what her expectations are short term and long term. She wants to be primarily blonde but does want a little bit of fun in there so we decided to create something that makes her feel like herself when her hair is down but if she braids her hair, wears her hair up or curls her hair, she can kind of incorporate those vivids into her style more seamlessly. So let's get started. So today, uh, since we are going to be doing the hidden halo technique, um, the sectioning for this is going to be pretty simple and straightforward. Two things that you want to consider is where they wear their hair. Um, for my client today, she has her hair parted down the sitter. Um, most of the time, if they wear their hair on the side, it can, you do have to take that into consideration because it will be more visible on one side or the other if you don't take the appropriate amount of hair. The other thing you want to consider is how they style their hair usually and what their natural texture is. Um, she mostly wears her hair straight, doesn't often add curls, so I want to make sure that when it's down, it's covering as much of those vivids as she feels comfortable with. Um, another thing you want to consider is their cowlick and the way that they wear their hair. If their hair opens up a little bit further down, it can be problematic if you do not have um, a low enough sectioning for that top placement. Those are the three things we're going to consider before we get her sectioning started. So once we have our idea in mind and our placement in mind, we are going to start on one side and because we're paying attention to her cowlick in the back, we are going to slightly diagonal it downwards. And if it's easier, if they have dense hair, to section out in three. And since toning with hydrogloss blonde is much different than vivids, you want to make sure that you have really clean, tight, secure sections. So now that we have her sectioning done, we want to make sure that there's a lot of clips to secure everything in place because we're doing such high contrast color palette. Uh, we don't want to get anything that we don't want where we don't want it because it will be harder to correct. So making sure that you have really clean, very precise sectioning and secure clips is going to make a big difference in the process. One of my favorite pro tips is to use some sort of plastic or a bib um, that you can use around your client's drape. Um, I like this not only for protecting the cleanliness of the drape and not having to change mid-service because vivids can be a little bit messy. I also like using this for sectioning between the vivid palette and the hydrogloss that we're gonna be using on top, which I will get into that in a little bit.
So now that we have this part done, um, you make sure that in your consultation you have proper conversation with your clientele about what their comfortability is when it comes to vivids, what their everyday lifestyle is like, how often they plan on maintaining their color, because that does make a difference in the colors that you will choose. Today, for my client and I, we decided to go with kind of a phoenix fire, um, but toned down on the cooler side. So we're gonna be using violets, pinks, coral, peachy tones with a little bit of yellow for a pop. That will be what we are going to apply underneath here. Um, we'll be doing a panel color melt situation, so you'll see different variations of it. Again, my client is a little bit more comfortable with stepping outside of the box, but if you have a client who maybe isn't fully ready to dip their toes in, a pink, a violet, pastels are always great options and they fade out a lot nicer. So we're gonna mix our color now. So now that we have our entire tray of bowls and our entire tray of color, we're going to get into the, the customization of making the colors. Um, Pravana Vivids are incredible for just straight out of the tube. Uh, for my client, however, we wanna make kind of a customized, really blendy, seamless transition between the shades that we chose. Um, so we're gonna start with the darker color and work our way to the lighter color. Our darkest color that we're gonna start with today is violet and for that we are going to be using a base of grape. We're going to be making uh, a little bit more of a neon violet to add into it. And for that, I use neon pink and neon blue. Um, this is a pro tip if you want like a very ultraviolet um, neon color. Mixing these two, obviously pink and blue, well not obviously, but pink and blue make purple. And so using the two neon colors give it that kind of like extra wow factor. Grape is a great base because it's so deep, um, but these just kind of all make a beautiful blend of colors, um, creating depth and vibrancy at the same time. Another pro tip um, with my colors today, I'm gonna be using a lot of clear or pastel, clear dilute or clear pastel. That either can amplify the color um, in a little bit of a lighter shade, it can also dilute the color to make it a lot softer and more pastel. I would always recommend starting with your clear pastel or clear dilute because that way it's easier to control the color that you're going to create in the end. If you start with your base color of Vivids and then you need to soften it, you're gonna end up usually wasting a lot more product in the end. So always start with your base and add your color in to kind of create that pa uh, palette for you because you'll save yourself time and a lot of product. So for that color, we are going to start with our clear pastel, which again is just going to soften it for us. So I'm gonna be adding a, a decent amount of this. Obviously we do not have a ton of color to work through on her head, so I wanna make sure that I'm not um, making too much, much product. However, it is a custom color and it is hard to recreate um, on a whim if you are not documenting how many grams you're putting, which I am just pouring into the bowl and kind of going for it. So make sure you make enough, but don't go overboard. And I will probably be using clear pastel or clear dilute for the majority of my colors today. The reason being my client does intend on switching her hair up later, so I don't want to do anything that's too deep that's going to be problematic or hard for us to get out later. When it comes to vivid work, another pro tip is thinking forward. You want to make sure that you're thinking about the future, not just of their hair um, and what their plans are, but how difficult it can make your job in the future. If you do a really deep blue, but next time they want to be light orange, you have to think about those things in the time because it will be harder for future you. So make sure that you take all facets into consideration when creating your palette. So then I'm going to start with my secondary color, which for this is going to be grape. Again, this is the foundation because the color is purple. Um, I wanna save room for the neon though, so we'll just do a little bit of that. I would say maybe three quarters worth in size. Next, I'm gonna be using my neon blue. I am going to probably put a little bit more neon pink into this formula. Um, if I use more neon blue than neon pink, it'll be a cooler violet. If I use more neon pink than neon blue, it'll be obviously more warm. Um, I'm choosing to do that because my palette here today is pretty warm, so I wanna make sure that the fade also kind of matches that. If there's too much blue into my formula, um, I wanna make sure that the fade is very effortless as it evolves into its color over the next four to six weeks. So I'll use a little bit of blue. If you would like a pretty straightforward, kind of even toned violet, I would say equal parts of blue and pink would be perfect. So the last color for this formula, it's going to be my neon pink. Again, just adding a little bit more neon pink than I did neon blue, closer to the amount of the grape that I added in the beginning. 
And before I move on to my next color, I wanna give that a good mix to see if I need to add anything else to my formula. 